again to discuss this. Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I'm Sidpar2. Joining me today is Red Leader. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone, indeed. Um, you know, I've got to come up with more creative intros because, like, people are making fun of vloggers and whatnot that just say, hello, people, or hi, guys, or whatever. I'm like, damn, that's true. I say that in every episode. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so recently I watched through Superman the Animated Series, and I'm guessing me tweeting about it, as I often do with shows I'm watching, kind of made Red want to watch through Superman the Animated Series, yep. and so Red watched through Superman the Animated Series and, and asked me if I wanted to review it with him, so here we are. Yep. Yep, cool story, cool story. Uh, <laughs> need, need a little bit more, bud. <laughs> so... I don't know, man. I'm just... I got the the fire stick now, and so I'm able to watch a lot more stuff without significant amounts of work, uh, at least ideally. And part of me just wanted to go through Superman the Animated Series. Uh, that's the series that I, like, I never watched much of at all. Um, I was really late to the DCAU for people in my generation. Um... Like, I watched Justice League. I'd caught episodes of, you know, BTAS or STAS or New Adventures or whatever. But I never really sat down and watched those as a series. And then, like, Super and the Anime series I knew the absolute least about. Like, I just vaguely remember it and Lex Luthor. And that's about it, so... It was quite a treat to really watch through this for the first time. Yeah, I remember, uh, I don't... The thing is, I was never really into superhero stuff as a kid, so I didn't really get any exposure to this stuff until I was older. And I think it was two years ago that I binged through Superman the Animated, the, yeah, Superman the Animated Series and just really, really loved it. And watching through it again... Yeah, it still holds up pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it's got a handful of, like... I don't even want to call them bad, but, like, skippable episodes, I'd say. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, like, awful. It's You know, Livewire's episodes are the closest to bad the show ever gets. Yeah. Um, Which is unfortunate, but... The majority of the show is just so much fun to watch um it's it's really really clever uh i love the use of dark side i love the way they set up dark side and and apocalypse and all that stuff that is just fantastic they they don't they don't not know how to write dark side like a lot of writers do they mm-hmm. they know what they're doing with him uh he's just got such fantastic lines like i love the moment that Superman first encounters Darkseid. And he's like, who are you? And Darkseid just Omega Beams his ass. And then goes, that is who I am. And I'm like, that's literally the perfect introduction for these two. Yeah, and like, right off the bat, this series kind of shows the, the leg up it has on Batman, where it really does have a consistent continuity. Like, you get... Mm-hmm. Kanto at the end of season one and Calabac showing up and kind of like just slowly building to dark side and there's an actual progression like things feel like they're evolving and dark side's the big example of that Mm -hmm. definitely um because i mean you eventually got that with batman the animated series and the way roz worked but still Mm -hmm. the the reveal of dark side the the pacing and and teasing of dark side and apocalypse is just excellent and then when it all culminates in the invasion of earth in the what is that the end of the second season um yeah i think so 
when it all culminates in the invasion of Earth, you get Dark Sides defeated, or well, has to run away because of New Genesis. But you got you had like a whole season setting up Dan Turpin, and then he's just killed purely out of spite. Mm-hmm. And it's just heartbreaking because that like he even looks a little bit like Jack Kirby. Oh, yeah, with the, the bushy eyebrows. Oh, man, that was painful. I, it, it's why Darkseid works so well. He's just evil. Like, he's just despicable. I mean, that moment at the end when, when Clark's like, I'm going to make you pay for for killing Dan Turp, and he's like, who? It's like, no, no, no. It's not just who. It's if I had known that one mortal's life would cause you so much pain, I would have killed hundreds and he's like and i'll send you over uh with that thought that i will kill more it's like oh god that is the best it's just like i'd say kirby obviously morrison and i don't know who's writing the the dark set episodes was it like one consistent person or was it i swear i know deanie wrote the last one uh let me see Some professionalism. Yep. Should have looked this up before the show. <laughs> uh, let's see. Apocalypse Now was written by Rich Fogel. Okay. Well, just the way Dark Side is written overall in this series is like those those three knew what they were doing with Dark Side. Just they understand he has a very particular style of dialogue and a very particular character motivation. That no one else really gets. Like, Johns doesn't write horribly or anything, but he just, when he writes Dark Side, it's not Dark Side. It's just generic alien guy. I think the problem um, with Johns is he's so good with human villains, or like, not, not not even just human, but like with like Sinestro and stuff, and Captain Cold with just normal, or not normal, but relatable people. Like, he gives a good explanation. The problem is, that's not what Dark Side is. Dark side mm-hmm. is just Eva. You, you kept saying that Dark side is. Yep, yep. He's not Dark just a man. Is. He's a freaking god. I mean that great line at the end that I, I was having some problems with the final episode, and then you, they kind of fix everything with just after everything Superman does. Just you know, you're like you're free now, and they just pick up Dark side. All the slaves just pick him up and like help him, and he says, "I am many things. Here, I am God." That's the best. That that Clark's own own world hates him now, and Darkseid's slaves love him. So Mm -hmm. fucked up. It is. It is just a perfect end to that series. um, Going into the wider DCAU with with Justice League, Um, it's just the perfect like you know knife twist kind of moment that it it's ah. I've never seen, like, something just so heartbreaking like that in, in a children's show before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they really, really did it. Um, and just, I don't know, man, the, the way Darkseid talks, the, the motivation he has, yeah, Darkseid is. Darkseid is the, the tiger force at the heart of all things. When you cry out in the night, it is Darkseid's name. It is Darkseid that you see. Um Dark Side's frightening. Dark Side just works so well in this series. And, like, this is, I feel, one of the things that really made Dark Side a Superman villain more than a DC, a DC Universe villain. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's weird to talk about this series, so, like, talk about Dark Side so much in this series, because he's kind of the overarching villain throughout a lot of the stuff, but so is Lex Luthor. Yeah, Lex certainly. is done fantastically in this as well. Like, a big complaint people throw at Superman is his, he doesn't have a very good rogues gallery. This show does some fantastic stuff with Superman's rogues. Metallo mm-hmm. is brilliant in this series. Lex Luthor is fantastic. He's almost the iconic Lex Luthor. Um, like, people talk about, you know, Conroy's Batman is Batman. <sighs> Clancy Brown's Lex Luthor, man. Yeah. That's perfect no one else ever got like has gotten quite 
quite on that level with him. Um, Livewire, I, I think, is probably the weakest villain, and Parasite starts out okay, and then it kind of goes downhill. Yeah. Um, Which gets sucks. Worse he's really appearance. interesting in his uh, second appearance, because they, they did something cool with him where he's... He's kind of a shithead, but he's not necessarily an evil shithead. He's just a shithead. And yeah. then they kind of just make him a dick by the end, and that that's saddening. Yeah, I didn't like that episode too much either. It's it's far from bad. It's just like, ah, okay, I guess, whatever. Um, just him constantly, you know, going after Superman seemed to get a little old, but, I mean, what else would he do? Mm-hmm. Um... They could have played it a little bit more, almost like he was going through a withdrawal when he was away from him. That would have made it a little bit better. Yeah, that could have worked, but I don't know. I just, I, he's not ideal, but he's still serviceable. Um, Toy Man is kind of in that same camp, but Mixoplick, oh. this is the best version of Mixo, Mixoplick ever. He is the Gilbert best Godfrey part is of the, the show. perfect voice captain. Yes, he's so good. Um, they even make Bizarro work, and I do not like Bizarro as a Superman villain, or just as a character in general. I, I generally dislike Bizarro. It's just really annoying to write a character that talks like that. Um, and they kind of the, get around they that do a little with bit, because they, they don't do the always speaking the opposite of what he means thing, which helps a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, that helps, but... I don't know, just generally I don't like that with Bizarro, but here he's certainly tolerable and entertaining to watch. Like, with that frickin' lizard dog thing, that was hilarious. Um, just everything about the the way they cast this works really well. Gilbert Godfrey as Mixoplick is ideal casting, honestly. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a better, better choice for that. Um... What do you think of the um, of the the use of live wire in this? Because we kind of mentioned it, but I th- I think she's the weakest part of the entire series. I I, I honestly think she might be the uh, she's not a bad voice actress. I haven't heard her in anything else that I remember, but uh, she was kind of the weak link, voice acting wise and character wise. Just she kind of just hates Superman. And then becomes a villain and blames him, tries to kill him, keeps blaming him. That's it. Like, they don't really do anything interesting. Like, I get the whole point supposed to be, oh, she's, like, one of those, you know, overly contrarian media people or whatever. But they don't do anything with that. They don't do anything with journalistic integrity, which would have been a nice thing to do since this Lois has none. Right? <laughs> she's hor- th- That final episode, she's just horrible. <laughs> I I so agree. It's it's hilarious how little journalistic integrity Lois has. Like, I remember I took a journalism class when I was in college, and someone, you know, was joking as we, were, we had, like, a professional journalist in the room talking to us. Someone was like, what do you think of J- Lois Lane's journalistic ethics? And he goes, oh my god, she's the worst! She, like, blatantly lies to people about what they're, what she's asking them questions about. You wouldn't be able to print any of her stories. Oh, uh, yeah, like, like when she has the information on the corrupt cop who, who killed that woman who's implied to be a prostitute or something, and she freaking, she goes to him with the evidence and is like, na 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 It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, definitely. <sighs> um... It's it's just hilarious how how all of uh, all throughout the the series she's had terrible like even in the the first what no it's the second episode no third third episode where she like sneaks onto the boat um that's that's carrying the the robot armor uh she's like <laughs> she lies her way onto that mm-hmm. and she's like not safe getting on there or anything it's like. What were you thinking? Lois Lane definitely deserves to die. Just as a journalist, (laughs) she is horrible. Yeah. Oh, my. Um, I mean, Danny Delaney's a great Lois, but, man, does this version of the character just act so entitled. Certainly. Um, 
You know, it's it's weird to to look at the way she's characterized because she she has that kind of cynicism, but cynicism in in contrast to Clark. But the way this series does it is she's kind of like always right, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I found that interesting, uh, but. I think she is certainly up there. Someone was telling me that this is their favorite Lois, and I I can see where that's coming from uh, as far as the characterization goes. But mine's still from uh, Margot from Superman the Movie. Yeah. I think she did a great job with it. Um, what do you think of Jimmy? <sighs> okay, so I'm weird. I mean, everyone knows probably that I like Robin more than Batman. And I have a kind of similar thing with Jimmy Olsen where I almost like the character as much as I like Superman. I was really let down by this Jimmy. Hmm. He gets like one focus episode at the end. And and the one thing that, that kind of annoys me is, in hindsight, they could have made that really interesting because he's not really Superman's pal in this series. And what they should have done is make it more focused on him and Clark being friends. Like, invert that. Have him not really be Superman's friend and be Clark's best friend. Because Clark really only spends time with Lois, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Which is a little problematic at points, because it kind of feels too distant from humanity, and the whole point of Jimmy Olsen is, you got this guy who, you know, knows the Justice League, knows Batman, knows the Legion, all these people, and who's his best friend? Some kid. Mm-hmm. That's so humbling, and they, they don't do anything with that, and that's really sad, because... That's why Jimmy works so well. I think he makes Superman a better character by extension. And so kind of dropping that was depressing. Also, he has a mullet. It was the 90s. It was a strange time. At least Clark never gets one. Yeah, yeah. We, we got that going for us. Um, I Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I don't much care for the characterization of Jimmy in this. Not because I think it's, like, bad. It's just... He doesn't get much of any characterization. He's kind of just there taking pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's weird. Uh, or not weird, it's just... He's, he's just kind of there, and at that point, do you even really need him? Yeah. Um, he could easily be replaced with, like, random bystander. Uh, okay, and then I guess the big character left to talk about is this Superman guy. Uh, kind of important in the show, I think. Oh, we've also got Kara. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, Kara. You know, she's introduced kind of late in the game, and then she doesn't get a ton to do after that point. In this series, I remember there was an episode where she and Batgirl hung out. Mm. Um, but that must have been from New Batman Adventures. Yeah. Yeah, but... Kara's interesting in this, because... That's the weirdest version of her origin I've ever seen. Yeah, it's one of those weird, this was the post-crisis stuff, so we're trying to do... It's complicated, because, I mean, knowing Bruce, Tim, and Paul Dini, they're massive Bronze Age fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at their Batman stuff. They worship the ground Antonio walks on. And then they also are working with the Bronze... You know, with the modern age post-crisis stuff, and... You get into the whole current Supergirl. I mean, at least they didn't do the modern age Supergirl. At least they didn't go there. Because I'm not the biggest fan of Matrix Supergirl. So I'm glad they didn't do that. Because remember See, when I don't sh- even know what that is. Okay, <laughs> so there's this alien, like, Matrix symbiote, like, shapeshifter thing who lands on Earth and, like, assimilates, like, Kara's identity. And so throughout the 2000, or throughout the 90s and early 2000s, uh, Supergirl is, uh, like, I think just Linda Danvers. She's not Kara zor And she's just this, like, alien shapeshifter who's assimilated the Supergirl identity. Oh, so they were doing the whole... That that was the whole Superman can be the only Kryptonian thing. Yep. I mean, that's why yeah, Kara that died was... in the first place. Merely because they wanted him to be the last Kryptonian. That's stupid. Um, yep. So they kind of yeah, get I... around that with, oh, she's Tara Inze, or whatever the heck her last name is. Uh, yeah, see, no, that's that's no good. Um, yeah. 
what they do here, though, I mean, it's serviceable. It's just like, okay, so she's... So Krypton had a colony that, like, was immediately lost as soon as Krypton blew up? That's a little weird. Mm -hmm. You'd think they would have had some advanced warning. You know, debris takes a while to travel across a solar system. It's uh, better than the Silver Age thing for the, Sil uh, for the city of Argo. Because they break off of the planet, like they, they like the, just the giant continent just snaps off, and is floating in space, and they're fine, because a pocket of Krypton's atmosphere stays with the chunk, and uh. then they stop themselves from solar radiation or something by putting like a sheet of foil over the city. Okay, it's amazing. I, wish I know that's everyone what they did. loves I the wish Silver that's what Age. They did. I know everyone loves the Silver Age, but there's a lot of really dumb stuff in the Silver Age. It's why it's so good. <laughs> um, no, I just, like, I, I thought that was a little weird to do. And then, you know, so she just gets so much skipped over so quickly, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you see Clark, see her in the thing, in the, in the uh, preservation chamber, whatever you call it. And then, like, the next scene, she's flying. Yep. And that was bizarre to me. And then, like, you know, she's got, what, two or three episodes after that point where she's Supergirl in Metropolis or she's, uh, you know, the one saving the world from proto-star uh, face guy. Starro? Starro, thank you. Yeah, it's like proto-Starro. It's like a... a lame over oh yeah which is so sad because they set up starro earlier with the preserver yeah i don't know why they didn't use it that would have been and was he in justice league at any point i think he gets referenced to get in justice league but i don't think there's a, a full episode of justice league just about starro um, i don't recall one let's see he he was in batman beyond's the call Oh, yeah, remember the episode with mm -hmm. Superman and Batman Beyond where he's possessed by Sorrow? Yeah, that's, that's that's it. That's a weird way to handle that character. But yeah, that... I mean, oh, look, it's alien invasions in Kansas. We're clever. Eh. Doesn't get anything to do. And that's pretty saddening. His the voice is really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like the design. It's it is very '90s, but in a cool way. Oh yeah, that's that's the best design for that character. Yeah, I like the the just t-shirt and uh, skirt. Something about superhero uh, superhero um, super heroines. There we go, and skirts just works for me. I just like it. Yeah, you know, it it's feminine and and it just flows perfectly as the the opposition like i don't like wonder woman's whole bathing suit thing mm -hmm. uh i don't like the the unitards i i prefer you know let the guys have the you know tights and let the women do the skirts i think it looks better yeah hated when car um, got the freaking stupid uh thing in the new 52 though the stupidest thing about that was the freaking cut out kneecaps i i have no idea she had a costume in the new read. 52 where her kneecaps were exposed no reason. Well, just the kneecaps. Well, you see, Jim Lee probably did the design oh, for it, God. and that's the problem. Random lines. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I like Supergirl in the series overall, though, but she doesn't get a ton to do, unfortunately. Um, that's not entirely true. She, she She's just introduced really late, and then they end... Sooner than I think they were ready to mm -hmm. with her. Oh, like she then, she plays a role in the finale, but really minimal, and I didn't like that. Yeah, she should have been a, a bigger part of that. Um, and I don't know, she came back in the DCAU, but like for what two episodes and then disappeared. Uh, she came back in Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, because like, well, they did the whole thing with uh, I forget what the name they did, but like the the pseudo Power Girl because. And I do like mm -hmm. that, where Hamilton, because Superman showed that he wasn't completely trustworthy, uh, takes her DNA and makes a clone of her mm -hmm. uh, in that show. And then I think what happens is she stays on uh, the, uh, in the in the 30th century with uh, Brainiac 7. Brainiac. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that was just a weird idea. Yeah. Um, 
It but, felt like the freaking uh, how we got rid of Susan in Doctor Who. <laughs> oh man, if Superman just did the whole like one day, one day I, I shall come back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they kind of just write her off, which is sad. Yeah, she's just you almost need like just half a season with like it's weird because she's there and then she's not there it's like she mm-hmm. keeps going back and forth between smallville and metropolis and i don't like that it she should have been just with clark after that after she she showed up in the series she should have just been a regularly occurring character mm-hmm. that's like, in the show as much as lois or jimmy yeah it's like that weird thing in batman the animated series where Barbara will just, like, stop being Batgirl for a few episodes and be like, I'm gonna come back to be Batgirl again, and, like, wait, you left? Yeah, Though at yeah. least there, we made her progressively more important to the series. Mm-hmm. Especially by the time of Batman Beyond. And that's something that never happens to Takara. She kinda is just a person involved, and we don't really make a big deal out of the fact that Clark has more family now, and Kryptonians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of Superman in this series, then? How do you like the characterization they do with him? When I first watched this, I kind of started to find him as being my Superman. I think now I have a much different take on the character. Uh, I feel like this version's a little bit too quick to punch his enemies. I feel like... I like like when, when watching the final episode, I had a lot of problems with how he was acting. And while I do like some of what we do in confronting that, they don't confront it enough. He gets a little bit too validated. My biggest problem with that finale being we shouldn't have vilified Lex and the general guy. Like, that episode's inherently more interesting if we don't make them the antagonists and kind of just have it be a tricky situation where... Because it's so much scarier if you have a situation where Lex is kind of the rational one. That is so terrifying and then they don't go there, they just kind of make him an asshole again, which pissed me off. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, I did not I did not care for their part of it, but everything else about that finale is just so good. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I love the, the character place that brings Superman to, where the whole world's against him now. Mm-hmm. Um, and and kind of like, rightfully so. Well, like, I really like how they end that with the, the you know, people talking to the news, where they go... You know, oh, I'm never going to trust him again, or blah, blah, blah. And you have, you know, Jimmy Olsen says, he's saved the world countless times. Everyone deserves a second chance. We owe him. Mm-hmm. I really like that. That was really, really spot on for me. And Hamilton's is just heartbreaking, where he's like, you know, because though I did like that with Hamilton in the show. It was great. Mm-hmm. Just making him Superman's essentially best friend, in a way, he almost replaces Jimmy. And just that ending with him being like, I thought Superman was my friend, now... And then he just, like, stops. Like, that that, that really kind of hits you. Because it's like, yeah, he was... Even more than Lois, he was Clark's biggest confidant and supporter. And now, you know, at the end of that episode, you know, Clark just holds... You know, you know, is losing it and, you know, uh, kind of chokes him out. It's like, yeah, that... Yeah. It, yeah, it makes really sense like Clark that Clark really beats himself up about that Injustice League. And moving forward into that show... And, and that's why I like some of the basis of this version... I feel like they perfect him in Justice League where he does everything he possibly can to be as calm. And there are points where he goes too far, like when he fights Shazam in that one episode uh, and smashes up Lex's city, which pissed me off, though, because they end up validating what Clark did to an extent, which annoyed me. But, like, I like the fact that this Clark certainly does have anger issues. I mean, there's that great point in uh, season one of JLA where they're go- they have to deal with Apocalypse, and Clark's, like, flipping out, and Bruce is like, I get it, you know, he possessed you, he, or he, like, mind-controlled you, he made you destroy, you know, humanity, you turn on everything you loved, deal with it. <laughs> it's just such a dick move, but it's so perfect for that relationship, because, yeah, Clark just beats himself up over stuff, and kind of rushes to anger, and then Bruce is, like, the mm-hmm. stable one? Which Certainly. is the scariest notion ever. Yeah, and you know, watching this, I do like this version of Superman. This is probably the best version of like the the a little too brash but good intention kind of brawler Superman. Mm-hmm. That's not the Superman I prefer, though. Yeah. I don't think you'd get away with a, a long form series on the, my Superman, which is I like 
I like my Superman with with a big helping of Jesus. Um, yeah, <laughs> I really like my Savior metaphor Superman. I cannot I cannot help it. I really really love my Savior metaphor Superman. Same All way. my favorite Superman things. He's a Jesus allegory. Um, so I, I really get into that stuff. But this I feel does the the you know Superman's just a guy trying his best to figure out what it is he can do to help and sometimes he's wrong and creates more problems for himself. I wish we were directly talked about when he's wrong, but yeah. Uh, and they have, they have some inklings of the, uh, you know, like our Superman, where he's a little bit more, like, always has the right thing to say. Like, when, when he saves those little kids, that was great. Mm -hmm. Which, like, sits him down and is like, yo, don't play chicken. Which I love how people contrast that with how Batman handles the kids on the train track in TAS, where he's just like, play chicken long enough, someone gets fried. Yeah, but the funny thing is, it's not actually Superman. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's the weirdest thing. The most Superman moment is Bizarro. <laughs> that would have been hysterical if it, it's exactly Steve's point. Man, of, That's Man of Steel Bizarro. Because Steve's whole point of Man of Steel Bizarro would be normal Superman. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh my. Man, I don't know. It's it's a whole it's a whole can of worms, bud. Um Okay, what's let's let's go and talk about just a couple of random things. Um favorite episode of the series. Uh Mix yes pixel pixelated. Yep, yep, same. So good. Totally agree. It's so much fun. My favorite moment is when he comes back and to his his home dimension, and he starts like yelling and screaming, and does like there's this good two minute montage <laughs> of all this work he's doing for how he's going to take out Superman, and then he it's like been three months and then he disappears to go back and fight him. And you just see his wife sitting there. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Five, and he shows back up again. He's pissed off. It's so good. <laughs> Look, that, and that episode is just them. They go full Looney Tunes there, and it's great. Oh yeah, that's the best part about it. it is it is you know tune power. I have a um a one shot comic of Batmite and Mixelplick fighting, and they destroy the universe in the process, <laughs> then rebuild it. Uh, and that is the or real origin of the New Fifty Two. Um. <laughs> But no, I like Mixelflick, just that they got away with him in this series is great because, you know, there's that side of comics that people don't like to talk about, and he's definitely in that camp, but they, they do it so well. Um, it's else? funny that, like, the best parts of this series is, you know, the, you know an imp from the fifth dimension, and Brave and the Bold also, the best thing about that series is Batmite. Certainly. It's almost as if Silver Age elements are the best freaking thing ever. Almost. When done with, with the right amount of yeah. um, scrutiny, it gets... Just going full tilt Silver Age can get really weird. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree. I love the Mixel Flick episode. Um, how about worst episode for you? What was it? Um, you don't have to give the title if you can't remember it. I I would lean maybe towards the Parasite Livewire team up, but I think the Maxima one might be my least favorite. Maxima. What's that one? Uh she's the person who tries to kidnap Superman so she can mate with him. Oh, really? I don't know. I found that one mildly amusing. Um I'm just not the biggest fan of the fact that we essentially show how bad of a roller she is, but because she's the roller we're kind of just like oh nope there there's the cliche evil coup and she learns a lesson and gets a second chance and i don't know i'm just kind of get sick of maybe it's just i don't like monarchies but i don't like the fact that we're like we have a coup but the coup's evil it's like but if they weren't she kind of rightfully needs to get taken down from power because she's abusing it yeah, yeah, I tend to agree with you. Uh, that that part of it was stupid, but she was just really fun to watch yeah, fighting certainly. Superman and stuff. 
that that it made it enjoyable so it's not nowhere near the worst episode for me uh for me it is the live wire and parasite team up simply for just like how many ways in which that episode kind of failed mm -hmm. um it could not get a consistently interesting take on live wire together parasite uh, you know kind of went up and down and then there's the weird like rape imagery with parasite yeah. which like it's certainly fitting for that character to do something like that but they don't do it very well but ultimately this all goes completely sideways when superman puts out a fucking condom <laughs> to go fight that is the worst superman costume design ever did no one at all look at that like during production like it's 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 right there like it who takes... the hell allowed that well, it's just like this, you know, I always get really curious about stuff like this. How does stuff like that get through production? How does no one speak up and go, Superman looks like he's in a condom? <laughs> I, I'll steal a thing from Radio Dead Air. Show everything to a 13-year-old boy. If he laughs, scrap it. Oh, that's funny. <gasps> Yeah, I, I gotta agree, because, like, I couldn't help but be really immature, but Superman definitely looks like he's wearing a condom. It's like he, he... You know, you see those videos of, like, people who take a condom while they're driving and, like, open the window and stick it out, and, like, it becomes this gigantic thing, like a giant balloon? <laughs> it looks like Superman was, like, flying there, he's like, shit, what am I gonna do? Oh, I know. Quickly bought a condom and then flew and, like, got the condom to open up. It's like, okay, I'm just going to put this over me. No one wants that scene of Superman going there because there's no way he can do that without the press finding out. And that's going to be uncomfortable if he's, like, has to explain to all the children, like, outside. Like, <laughs> man has to buy a condom. Oh, my. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that, that wasn't one of Mark Millar's uh, Superman Adventure comics issues. <laughs> oh my oh my indeed um okay what's what's an episode where you're like where do you think it, it's kind of underrated or, or should be talked about more because everyone talks about the dark side episodes of this series uh the episode that comes close to be my second favorite which is uh the late mr kent oh the one where he, he has to like fake his death and stuff yeah, that was really fun. Uh, mainly just because... Of, I mean, Lois is horrible in that episode, but the ending is just so dark and morbid, and I love it with the guy figuring out that Clark Kent's Superman right as the gas goes on and kills him. That is very Tales from the Crypt. Oh, yeah. That is very, very Tales from the Crypt. I was really surprised they, they managed to get that one in there. Um, I don't even think Batman the Animated Series had freaking gas chambers. Yeah, damn, right? I think um, this series actually has more blood than Batman TAS. Probably. I I would not be surprised. Uh, it, it was getting later in the 90s and you mm -hmm. could start to get away with more stuff. Um, I think that the episode for me that's really underrated is the one that introduces Steel, but before he becomes Steel, not the... the um, Mm -hmm. Man of Steel, I think is the name of the episode. Correct or Men of Steel, wrong. something like Man that. Men of Steel, yeah. Not that one. That one's good, too. Um, oh, there's something else we can talk about in a sec. But the one that introduces Steel and deals with this LexCorp robot suit that's, you know, taking over um, this guy's ability to, you know, behave rationally. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. And it just dealt with a lot of, like, complex themes, like... Okay, how does Superman handle a cop whose power has gone to his head? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. That is literally what that guy is. He is a cop whose power has gone to his head. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and they, they handle it, I felt, really, really well. And it, it was incredibly interesting. Um, something else worth talking about. I think the consistently weirdest episodes in this are the ones that try to introduce other characters from the DCAU. Yeah. With the single exception of Steel. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because Steel is a Superman character, so it makes a little bit more sense. It works there specifically because Steel is a Superman character, and he's obviously very inspired by Superman. The rest of them, God, they get 
weirder and weirder. Like, the Aquaman one, they just completely scrap by the time they get to Justice League. Mm-hmm. The Green Lantern one, more or less, they scrap, but whatever. Actually, they, they do completely scrap the Green Lantern one, because in an episode, of, the only episode of Justice League where we see Kyle Rayner, he's on Oa. It doesn't look the same whatsoever. But also, very importantly... In one of the first two episodes, one of the first episodes of Justice League, the John Stewart in Blackest Day ep- or in Blackest Night episode, uh, he's on trial and he like comes across Catman. No, no, it's not that episode. There's another John Stewart two parter with uh, the the Third Eye guy. Um, but like he's he's hanging out with Ka- John Stewart's hanging out Destro. with Katmatui. Yeah, Destro. John Stewart's hanging out with Katmatui in that episode with Destro, and she's like, oh, you're worse than that Rainer kid you sent me. So they completely scrapped Rainer's origin from this series. And it makes sense, because that, that episode's just bad. I, I think that actually might be the worst episode for me, because why? Why would you take Kyle and just make him Hal? I don't know. And then it's, acknowledge it's... Hal exists. Yeah, it's weird. It's they give like this thing. It's just like, wait. So you essentially, it, it, the biggest annoyance is Superman is the one who's with Avin Sir when he dies. Yeah. Ugh. And then that, Sinestro's that... just a freaking bully. Agreed completely, and like, like really foolishly so. Like he's like, when he encounters Superman, he just thrashes him. That's not how Sinestro works. Like ever really. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, the character improved with Johns and everything, but Sinestro doesn't just come in and smash. Um, if Superman, if he saw Superman and, and Superman clearly didn't know who he was or what he was doing, Sinestro was the type of character to manipulate Superman. You know, it's unfortunate, but the DCAU never really did Green Lantern all that well. Yeah, you got you got the the two episodes that Jon Stewart gets it in Justice League. Those are pretty good. Um, the rest of the time, they never really quite do Green Lantern justice. I, I always think back to one episode of Justice League Unlimited where it's like with the um, the Legion of Doom. And they are sitting there discussing a gold robbery... And it goes to Sinestro and is like, it'll be the single greatest gold heist in Earth history. I'm like, the what fuck are you there for? Why does he care? <laughs> He's Sinestro. He conquers pl- you know, his home planet. He wants to freaking kill the Guardians for the injustices they've caused. He wants to bring order to the galaxy. Why do the hell does he want to steal gold? Yeah, and like, seriously, there's one episode of Justice League where it's like, and Sinestro, he just really hates Green Lanterns. No, not really. He actually quite respects the court. That's that's not his character at all. They never really did Sinestro much justice. No, I mean, I, the whole reason Hal, or uh, not Hal, the whole reason Sinestro works that he respects Hal and, you know, is kind of sympathetic to them. Like, he sees the Green Lanterns as being, like, lesser versions than him, but, like, not out of spite, but more, why can't you see how easily you're being duped kind of thing. Like he feels yeah. bad for them. He wants to. He wants to save them in his mind. Mm-hmm. And that's not really here at all. He is just a bully. You're right. Um, and then there's just the like butchering of Kyle's origin. Like Kyle is not the Green Lantern to launch a show with. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed that um, Green Lantern the animated series managed to introduce two Human Lanterns and set up a third, all in one season. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. I had no idea how the hell they were going to get to Kyle. I had absolutely no idea how the hell they were going to get to Kyle. He would have probably been a a season three character at best if they spent the whole fourth or the whole second season setting up Sinestro and Hal's fall. Otherwise, I don't see how you could have gotten to Kyle. (laughs) Yeah, Um, I mean, the trickiest thing with Kyle is you need to have Hal turn evil to have him. Like, he can't work as the first Green Lantern at all. The whole reason yeah, he, he works really as a character doesn't. is because he's trying to live up to Hal's example, but also avoid becoming, you know, what Hal became. 
Yeah, and that's that's the thing is Kyle doesn't work at Kyle is truly a legacy character. He is a character who's fascinating because he's picking up a legacy, um, and and remains fascinating to this day because of the experiences he dealt with with that. Even that, even though we we moved past that era for him, mm -hmm. um, and so that's just it's just weird to try to do him as the first lantern. But even if they did, even if they just went, okay, he's an artist and he gets the ring, is it's not Kyle's origin. It's still Hal's. Yeah. Everything about that is Hal's origin story, but they just make it Kyle for some reason. Um, and I cannot figure out why, if it was like a DC thing or a WB thing, or Kyle was just more popular at the time. I don't know. It was a bad decision. And you have to question then where him and the core are when Apocalypse attacks. Yeah, that's weird. Honestly, I think the best way to possibly have handled this would have just been to use Alan instead all oh, that would have been interesting. I mean, then again, I have no I just respect want... for Alan Scott, but that would have been interesting. You're wrong, but sure. Dude, he could get his ass kicked by a guy in some claws. That's hey, Alan. That's... He, is, he is weak to it. That doesn't mean he can be beaten by it. Alan Scott can freaking whoop someone's ass with his bare hands. I mean, um, he beat Sol saying. he beat Solomon Grundy with his bare hands. I'm just saying, Solomon Grundy puts on a pair of clogs. It's over. He dealt, he dealt with no powers. That's how, no seriously, that's, that's how he beat him the first time Solomon Grundy showed up. Because he beat him up, and so, Alan's so pissed that he doesn't even use the ring, just out of spite. He's like, I oh, swear wow. to God, I will get my spine broken if that's what it takes. I don't care. Eh, I don't know. I have no respect for Alan Scott. Have that, you read John's remains... JSA stuff? No. Read it. He's the best. Okay. Um... But yeah, the, just all the stuff they try with the DCAU gets kind of... It just feels really out of place in this. Like, the Doctor Fate episode works a little bit better just because, okay, it's a magical threat for uh, Superman. I didn't like that at all. Actually, you know what? That is my least favorite episode right there. Because... Really? Yeah. I don't like the fact that... I've never been the biggest fan of introducing a character by having the character of your story teach them how to be a hero again or in the first place i never liked that in the first place especially because you could do that with fate but you have to make it more interesting because it's just kind of like vaguely like oh i fight the same battles and that sucks so i'm gonna be apathetic now and then clark's like heroicism <gasps> heroicism what's cool yeah. about what's cool about kent is you can do kent leaving because the whole thing with Kent's origin is when he was a kid, his dad and him were, uh, his dad's an archaeologist, and he brought him along for a dig. And the spirit of Naboo, who's inside that helmet, freaking murders his dad and then, like, possesses Kent. Mm. Like, Kent's life is hell. He's, like, this immortal sorcerer who, you know, has to put up with all this shit and demons and is in in this god is trying to steal his body essentially and take over him like actively and like he's taking away all his identity and, and everything like that like there's a reason to have him never use the helmet again but they don't really use it it's just kind of like he uses the helmet because it's his weapon as opposed to the whole point of it being the spirit of naboo that's you know taking over his mind and it's really sad like like back to john's uh jsa run he does some cool things with uh uh, who was the, uh, it was, it was Hawkman's son, Carter's son, uh, Hector, uh, mm. who becomes Dr. Fate in that, because the whole thing is the, the, the new Fate is born, and it's Hector. And it's a great point where he's, like, talking to, uh, Carter, and, he, like, his, his dialogue balloons, like, change the color to the Dr. Fate speak, and he's just, like, being very cold and stuff, and Carter's like, take the damn helmet off. What? Take it off. And he takes it off, he's like, better? Yeah. Like, and it, like, he, his voice will start to change because the Naboo's possessing him. And then they do nothing with that. Here, he's just kind of emo. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um. I know he was done better later in Justice League, though. Gotcha. I don't know. It just... I didn't hate the episode or anything. I just felt like it... 
it worked better than than the Green Lantern one for me, just because okay, this is a threat Superman probably can't solve on his own mm-hmm. because it is magic based. Um, the Aquaman one was just so random, and it's Aquaman, and he's just there. It's like oh yeah, we Atlantis, it's all a thing. Really, just one episode to set all this up. Yeah. We're supposed to be invested right now. I'm not feeling very invested right now. And then in Justice League, he, he, they make, like, vague reference to it, but that's about it. And, like, he he's just kind of a jerk. Like, he, he just, like, shoots up Lex's thing because one gunner against orders attacked him. And he sinks the whole ship and could have killed, like, 100 people. And he's just like, like, you, that will be watching. And it's not a good introduction to that character. Especially because Arthur's not supposed to really be an asshole. I mean, in the Peter David stuff, he's angry constantly, but more because his life is hell. But even then, he's still a nicer guy than that. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of a jerk. And then the other one was uh, Flash. I like that one. That one worked a bit better. That one's probably the best um because i I don't think steel really counts flash is a bit of a jerk in that but flash is kind of just a bit wally west flash has been written as kind of just a bit of a jerk um he's really consistent with what they do with him in uh justice league but i just man i really like that one because it's you you have to like it you're legally required to like it because they do the race around the world yeah so therefore (laughs) <laughs> it is funny, though, because there he's, like, you know, it takes him, like, so long to go around the world. And then you get just how flippin' powerful... Like, like, there's just a cool evolution for Wally as a character. Like, Kyle doesn't show up again. Arthur might as well have not have been in the show. Hector, not Hector, Kent might as well have not been in the show. But Wally actually evolves, and so it kind of fits better, especially because right with the whole going around the world thing... You get that amazing scene in Justice League with the uh, Lex Brainiac combination thing where he goes around the entire world in a matter of, like, five seconds and just keeps punching Lex. Yeah, and, like, it's... I I just am reminded again and again of my favorite scene from Flash Rebirth that, like, I, I hear people talk that book down all the time, but I'm like, you can't talk down this scene of Superman trying to keep up with Barry oh, Allen... Yeah. And tells him, I can keep up with you. We've had all those races around the world. And then him just going, those races were for charity, Clark. Foo! <laughs> and Clark's just like, well, that's not good. Like, shit. Like, yeah, because he's that. You can't, you can't outrace Barry Allen or Wally West. They are, you know, as he puts it himself, the fastest man alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. Like, the, the whole going around the world thing, I, I had just assumed that was because it's a charity race. Mm-hmm. Um and I don't know, that that one probably works the best. Even introducing Weather Wizard. It helps that, like, we already have the sense that Wally West is a hero. Even though he's never been mentioned in that show before, just the way they talk about him at the beginning of that episode, everyone knows about him already. Everything about that context just works a lot better mm-hmm. uh, than the Doctor Fate one or the just a lot of the other DCAU episodes. Just... That works a lot better. The, the Batman ones are good, too. Um, I really like the one where Superman pretends to be Batman. That was fun. That was incredibly enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really liked uh, Demon... Not Demon Quest, what was it? Uh, Demon Reborn. That's really good. Oh, with Roz? I thought it was okay. Uh, I like it because a... Talia actually gets to do something in the DCAU. Cool. Yeah, fair enough. She's just there to pine for Bruce, which is really annoying. Mm-hmm. She actually, she actually gets results. That and also, I love that Batmobile. Yeah. I'm like the only person who actually prefers the new Batman Adventures Batmobile to the normal TAS Batmobile. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. Um... All right, you want to go ahead and go on to ratings then, or did you have anything else you wanted to bring up? Uh, I'm trying to think if there was any other 
villains or anyone we missed. Oh, Brainiac. I love Brainiac. Oh, sure. yes. This is the vast reinvention of Brainiac. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I like the way he's characterized here. It's it's really, really good. Yeah, the whole backstory of him being from, you know, well, in this series, was he created for Krypton? Yeah, that's the implication. Okay. I really like the idea that Morrison came up with of him actually, you know, just, he's done this to a thousand other planets, and of course that great moment of, here I was known as gibberish. On Krypton, Brainiac. This world, gibberish. This world, internets. Yep. So good. Yep. Totally. But yeah, ratings. Um, uh, oh, do you have something else you wanted to add? Nope, no. I just, I like Brainiac in this show. Ratings. These are out of ten or out of five? Out of five. Out of five. Okay. I give this 4.5 hastily repaired Daily Planet Globes out of five. <laughs> I'll give this um yeah I tend to agree with you 4.5 seems really fair because it's got a handful of like episodes that don't work but nothing that's like unwatchably awful um so I'm gonna go 4.5 out of 5 uh Superman condom action figures <laughs> oh god Yep, there you go. If you want, here's here's how to do a custom action figure from one episode of Superman the Animated Series. Mm. Get a Superman the Animated Series action figure. Stick it inside a condom. Congratulations. You can sell that on eBay. <laughs> there we go. Don't buy it on eBay because you do not know where that's been. Oh, uh, So who am I going to sell it to? <laughs> that might be a selling point. For some, yeah, for some people. Yeah, there we go. All right, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. Red, thanks for doing this. No problem. All right. Until next time, I'm the philosopher, and I'm the rogue one. Yes, I went there. Uh... I planned that so long. Enjoy the next 10 minutes of Ian doing this sound. I'm getting the stuff thrown at me. <laughs> <laughs> and we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things.